Here's Glenn Woods on News Talk 1270 KIML. 9.06 the time. News Talk 1270 KIML, the radio station. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. You know the number is 682-1270-307. if you're outside the area code. And coming in on the bold cam. I didn't make up that name, Susan. One of the listeners made up the name for the bold cam there. Susan Core from Wyoming Liberty Group down in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Looking good, Susan. How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, Glenn. All right. I, I get a chance. I was explaining to the audience just before I, I, well, before the news hit top of the hour that I found you guys kind of by accident some time ago, and then some people started talking to me about you. Like, for instance, Nick DeLott, which you know well, Camel County Observer, yeah. started mm-hmm. uh, publishing some of your articles. And then I thought, you know, I hate to say it, but Wyoming really, I, let's just – just to say, it. they they just suck for news and information here in in Wyoming. When when you're trying to find news, it's just kind of hard to find good news. So I've started to rely on news people. Yeah, you, you folks down there as a good. I almost said use people. <laughs> Where am I from? Uh, as, as a good source of information and opinion as well. And if people go to my regional page, you'll find a lot of articles from Wyoming Liberty Group. You are the founder. What made well, you? Yeah, and uh, it's not only news, it's, it's you know, we're a think tank, Glenn. Yeah. So uh, thinking is harder than you, you, you'd imagine. Uh, Wait, that sounds like an insult. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, when you come to uh, looking yeah. at uh, the issues of the day, you do your research, right. you consult, and uh, then you hope you come to something useful. Yeah, okay. Well, and then uh, and let's also let people know that you – Folks at Wyoming Liberty Group have at times even offered legislation and even, you could say, uh, consult and testify in front of committees when they're in session in Cheyenne. Well, we, the legislature is, is short on staff, and so if we are asked to do something, uh, we're very glad to do support. And if we have done some research on a, a, an important topic, we, uh, we're there testifying. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, and some of the people that you have on your staff, where have you pulled them from? And, and by, well, it has to be somebody who wants to live in Wyoming. Well, that, that's the first part of it, but then also <laughs> we, you have to have a certain kind of a philosophical qualification. Would I, say, w- would I be right in saying that would be libertarian or libertarian-ish? Well, it's a, we're nonpartisan. We draw from libertarian and conservative uh, orientation. Mm-hmm. But we have something in common with uh, with more liberal people in terms of transparency right. or juvenile justice, those kinds of issues. So we're really broad public interest. Okay. And, uh, and the reason I started this was because I wanted to live in a place where we could I, – I had a better quality of life. Right. I didn't want to see us overwhelmed by uh, a, a too much government, too many regulations, a loss of our culture. Right. Well, and let, let's talk about that for just a moment, because even though Wyoming, as far as the other states, it was even voted by some group as uh, the most conservative state. Still, though, uh, we have our problems when it comes to an assault on liberty here in the state of Wyoming, don't we? Unfortunately, yes. And um, one of the things I've been doing lately, Glenn, is looking at how government affects the character of the people. If you, uh, one of the books I've been reading is is. Um, this one, Who Really Cares by uh, Arthur Brooks, right. and he talks about the generosity of people. He, do, he, he does demographic analysis, reads a lot of studies of different countries, and probably you know that America is the most generous country in the world. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that? I have heard of that, and I've also noticed that, like, for instance, when there is a major earthquake or a flood or a tsunami somewhere, before the government ever even gets a chance to take our money from us and hand it to those people to help them, we've already donated. In fact, usually church and civic groups show up long before the government ever does and are there long after our government pulls out. We still have church and civic groups on the ground in these places doing not not just showing up with money, but food, helping them build. I'd say we're the most generous country on the planet. That's right, and and Wyoming has that tradition. I when I first moved here, uh, I was a single woman living, older woman living in a house, and I was traveling on business, and my, my roof blew off some shingles, and doggone, my neighbor climbed up on the roof and fixed it. Mm-hmm. There's that that sort of thing of reaching out in Wyoming that I really appreciate. 
Right. Well, so a good place to live. Now, what have you come up against uh, in the state of Wyoming, let's say in the legislature? Because while we're a lot less liberal than other states, still, though, I see that encroaching statism into the capital. Absolutely. In a way, our, um, our severance money that we've had a lot of money to spend has just grown government, mm. and that hasn't been helpful to us. So we have a, a tremendous trend of more government workers per uh, citizen than any other state in the union. And that's grown again. Last time we looked, it was 309 per thousand. Now it's 312 per thousand. It's a steady trend upward of government hiring. And it's hiring the talent out of the communities. Right. Well, in fact, uh, after he got done with his legislative session, Speaker of the House Tom Lubna usually comes up and <clears throat> sits down for an interview here. So I had him sitting right over there across from me, and I asked him, so, okay, we're going to go ahead and cut out of the budget, and we're up to you know, 6 to 8%, depending on which agency you're talking about. But I had to ask, so did the state of Wyoming grow, or I mean, the, the government, did it grow or shrink? Because when I look at this past legislative session, what I got out of it was our taxes went up, and government grew. Now, he couldn't exactly deny that. He was good at talking his way around it. He's a politician, but he didn't exactly deny it. Well, you can't deny the figures. Yeah. And uh, they, when they say, they, they say it's not growing as fast, it's mm -hmm. still growing. So we call about. that a, a, a mistaken trajectory. The, the, the trend is in the wrong direction. Right. And we'd like to change the trajectory. Okay, now, since you are uh, the founder of Wyoming Liberty Group, change it how? <laughs> some, some of us say it's like getting an elephant to turn a car cartwheel. You know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's not an easy task. But uh, Amy Edmonds and Sven Larson are doing some transparency work on the budget. Before you can stop it, you have to you know exactly what's happening. And the truth is, Glenn, a lot of, really, most legislators don't know and how how that works they don't know how the spending quite happens it just seems to grow with no connection to an overall plan Th that disconnect in government is something that's always just thrown me it's an amazing disconnect once you get into government and even it it seems you're they're, they're immersed in it and they have less of an idea of how things happen even though you would think they would have more because they're the people who are writing the laws one of the biggest problems i've found and i first noticed this on the federal level but it shocked me when I came to Wyoming and I thought, Lord, they're doing it here, too. And again, it's supposed to be the most conservative state. But the legislators will write a, a law, which is, in a sense, an outline, not really a law, just what they want to have done. And then they'll take that and turn it over to the bureaucracy and say, you write the rules to get that done. Well, what they just did was gave authority to the bureaucrats to what they call write rules. And it, they're writing laws. I have a criteria for that. If I have to do it or else, or I'm caught doing it and I'm punished, it's a law. So they just turned lawmaking authority over to the bureaucrats. So I even see our, bureau our bureaucracy getting more powerful here in the state of Wyoming not, and, and getting bigger, not just the legislators. That's true. One of, the, one of my areas of concern is that the uh, Department of Education is writing the the regulations for non-governmental uh, education. So private schools are coming under the government purview and they're doing it quietly. They're aligning the, uh, the reg rules with Washington rather than locally. And it's basically just something that happens behind the scenes. Right. Well, and, and let's, let's, let me build on that for just a minute because I've been encouraging people for quite a while. I, when I take a look at how nuts our schools have become, right down to kids, a kid eating a Pop-Tart. And a, have you heard about this story, the Pop-Tart yes. story? Yeah, okay, <laughs> well, I, that's just insane. So get your kids out of those schools. Go to a charter school, go to a private school, homeschool. But, of course, I think there are those in government who see that there is a trend toward that right now. More and more parents are pulling their kids out of that insanity and, well, that means, well, you can't let it go if you're in government. You've got to have control over that. So you've got to find a way to tax it and regulate it, don't you? Well, it's a, it's a great concern that if you're dissatisfied with the public schools, the government doesn't let you escape. Yeah. For instance, my grandkids, uh, I have four grandkids homeschooled. 
my son wanted to get together with another family and, and hire a teacher, but that was illegal in the state of Wyoming. That could not be done. Right. Uh, all kinds of regulations prevented that. Let's back up and say that again, just so people understand. So they wanted to home homeschool families yeah. want to get together and hire a teacher part-time mm -hmm. to, to uh, teach their families. That's illegal in the state of Wyoming. Wow. See, I had never heard of that before. That's something yeah. I need to look more into because I, here again, they should be allowed to do what they want as long as they are. Well, what kind of criteria do we set down? If they're going to hire a teacher, uh, should there be any kind of testing or criteria to know that these kids are getting a proper education? Well, they the, the data show that the, the more regulation that a state exercises over homeschooling or private schooling does not improve the achievement levels. Right. It's it's uh, arrogant of the legislator le legislators to think that they're on, the only ones that know what an education is. Mm -hmm. That nobody in civil society also might have a good idea about what an education is. Especially a concerned parent. Let's pick on especially a, a, a concerned parent. Right. Let, let's pick up that on more just a moment from now. I got to go rush off and pay some bills. Talking with Susan Gore, she's the founder of Wyoming Liberty Group down in Cheyenne. 919's the time. News Talk 1270, KIML's the radio station. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me on the Bold Cam. Susan Gore, who's the founder of Wyoming Liberty Group, who started the group all by her lonesome self. But uh, beautiful offices, by the way. I had a chance to go down and visit them just a little while ago, and I like the way you set that up. Coming in with some phone calls right now, Susan. This is Glenn. Who's on the phone? Yeah, Glenn. Hey, this is Brad. Yes, sir. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm I'm sitting here reveling in the fact that uh, this person's got to, Susan's got to be my new hero. Yeah. Um, I was uh, just yesterday. I mean, we're talking about the, the private school, public school, and again, I'm I'm amazed at how you know, sadly, those parents and teachers who work in private schools are not paid exorbitant amount of money. Um, and I, I see that as a sacrifice. They, there is no, no quote-unquote government input, which is good because you have the strings attached with the government, which is ridiculous. But um, I picked up two. I picked up a pack of kids yesterday in my limo. Um, I have a side business, and I uh, was doing a party. Uh, teenagers yesterday. Uh, deplorable. I mean, the behavior, mm -hmm. uh, by and large, was I, I wanted to get back there and absolutely rock some skulls. Yeah. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You're 13 years old, and you behave like this. You know, I'm like, this, so this is what our school is, you know, assisting and pumping out. And then and, uh, we, we came up on a bunch of joggers right. and high schoolers. And one of them just popped his shorts <laughs> moon, moon my vehicle. And I was like, you know I what, see. that's nice. Nice butt. <laughs> Too bad it's on your shoulders. Gotcha. I, I wish I had a paintball gun so I could have peppered it. Gotcha. Would have you know? been fun anyway. But Okay, so anyway, you're, you're a, uh, a private school advocate then. Oh, absolutely. All right. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Six eight two twelve seventy. The phone number. I didn't see the part about the mooning and the peppering of the butt coming, Susan. I had no idea where that was coming from. But okay, let's get back to this quick, real quick because I am surprised. And I'm taking this not just from the school point of view, but from an over point, uh, overall point of view. Again, where the most conservative state is what we're called. But when I hear about rules like that, like I can't go ahead and get together with some other parents and just hire a private teacher and just let them teach in the privacy of my own home if I wanted to. I should be allowed to do that, but here in the state of Wyoming, apparently that's illegal. How long has that been around? For some time, I, I was looking at the rewrite that the Department of Education is coming up with, and it has things like uh, uh, required hours of the school, like compulsory attendance, how many hours you're required to uh, attend. Um, that I find onerous because kids, in, at least for the homeschoolers, they usually do their schoolwork in the morning and then they, they are free to do uh, other kinds of activities in the afternoons. Right. And it, the, the achievement levels are still there. So to keep kids captive in schools for the same amount of time is, uh, is not a good idea. Right. This is Glenn who's on the phone. Oh, it's Linda. Yes, sir. Hey, you know, it kind of surprised me when they go and said that the homeschoolers we're going to hire a teacher, and they, you know, couldn't because state regulates. You know, it's really sad to say that in our history, the community used to get together to hire the teacher to educate their kids, and without, you know, and they're the ones that kept the local because 
you know, the legislation, you know, we didn't allow the legislation to get involved to take that away from us. But it sure shows us in how that when we start allowing legislation to change to supposedly be better, how it gets corrupted. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's a slippery slope. Thanks for calling in, Lyndon. Well, and and I, I part of what I look at is also not just uh, homeschooling where they try to hire a teacher like that, but I take a look at some of the rules that come in with uh, individuals. My sister homeschooled, so I know a little bit about this. The individuals homeschooling as well, but they tend to get parents tend to get to get get together with other parents who homeschool. Maybe not hire, but they form homeschool groups, and that's regulated as well. This is Glenn, who's on the phone. Hey, I missed part of that because I was on the phone, but yeah. I I did homeschool for a while, and I. I didn't do it uh, 15 years ago because I didn't have any kids then, but I believe homeschoolers were allowed to, at the time, under state law, also attend specific classes at public school facilities like mm -hmm. uh, for track or for shop or for something like that or astronomy, um, something you know that would be really hard to do homeschool-wise. Right. And I believe the local um, school board or the schools here were very uh, reluctant and, in fact, antagonistic towards homeschooling parents and we're saying well we're not going to allow you on our premises because you're not enrolled in the school and I believe a judgment was handed down and I I'm really blurry on the details here but I believe a judgment was handed down and they said you you cannot bar children that are citizens from taking specific classes at the school at a publicly funded school under state law now does anybody know if that's still the case, or has that changed? Susan, do you know? I, I can speak to it a bit. I, I, we have also lived in Iowa and had homeschooling there. I have grand, a lot of grandkids, and they are very cooperative. The public schools cooperate very beautifully with the homeschoolers for if there's a science lab or a sport or a band or a dra drama presentation. They all cooperate, and the kids can come in. When our kids went to... Um, the, ho the local public school because kids who are homeschooled kind of like to see what's happening in those buildings. Uh, they were told they couldn't uh, visit the uh, the classrooms, that they were not welcome. Mm, uh, there's just a few minutes left and there's so much to cover. We got off on the schooling issue because you kind of threw me for a loop with that one there. But uh, Wyoming Liberty Group covers a range of topics. We got a, a lottery was just signed in, Susan. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. But a lottery is sort of a sneaky tax. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somehow the government's going to make money by getting people to game, and of course it's right. it, the people who play are usually the people who can least afford it. It's, it's right. not a good idea. Okay, that and we, of course we have, well, there's a whole list of problems, and I'm, I'm running short on time here. People find your website where? How do they get to your website? www.yliberty.com. We'd love to have you visit our website. Okay. Now, if you're ever down in Cheyenne, you guys host some events once in a while. I do know that, right? Well, we love it if people just stop by our offices. We're down, well, we're across the street from the jail, but we prefer to say we're down from the Civic Center uh, <laughs> on the corner of, uh, we're on Thome Street. Yeah. We love people to drop by. We also have, uh, the first Tuesday of every month, we have a Liberty Forum, and we mm -hmm. love, in the, in the evening. So we love right. people to come articles for that. To read on your website. There's YouTube videos as well. So there's a whole bunch of information there to keep informed in what's happening here in the state of Wyoming. I've been referring people your way because as people call me for information, I find that one of the easiest things to do when I'm a bit overwhelmed is here's the Wyoming Liberty Group website. They wrote an article about that. Here you guys go. So we love to have people come and check us out. All right. And what's the address again? The email address? Uh, www.yliberty.com dot com w y liberty dot com all right thank you susan good to see you again thank you glenn oh.